good evening, good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first, see, we're, we're historians already, the first 2021 Fire Federation Ambassador inauguration today. I am so excited. I, 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 I'm excited. I'm, I'm gleeful. I'm anticipatory that this is going to be amazing. And I'm just asking everyone just to say a small prayer because I'm in here with two grandchildren, 18 months and three years old, and I'm praying for quiet in the background. <laughs> so say a small prayer for me, please, 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 that they will find something on that computer. <laughs> it's going to keep their, their attention for at least an hour, at least an hour. I'm going to try to make it as short as possible, but at least an hour. Um, what we are coming here to do today is we are coming to announce and pronounce the great works of these extraordinary humanitarians. They have gone above and beyond to do the work, to be the example, and to continue the mission of humanity in the fight for gender and human rights. And as um, lead at the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights, I am so, so happy to be able to welcome each and every one of you right now in this space. I am, I was just about to say, I'm waiting for Queen Mother to come in. And as soon as I say that, who arrives? I'm telling you, divine timing is truly divine. But I am here with you today for about an hour to be able to just recognize some of these, these fine individuals and also appoint them to a post that is not only, as I always like to say, historically in the, in the act of making history, but they are worthy. And it's time for their light to be on and be that lighthouse for those that are wanting to come into this work. It's not easy to set a precedence and then be able to ask people to lead under that fellowship. But it is possible for you to do it creatively with the power that they already possess. And today we are going to announce this power. We have 13 people we're going to acknowledge today. And at the end of this um, acknowledgement, we are going to inaugurate them into this position. I'm going to explain all of this and why it is there, but I want to welcome you. I want to give you that opportunity to say hello to each and everyone in the chat box. Congratulate everyone who is here because everyone here is being celebrated. And for those in the background, those that are going to be uh, witnessing history. I want you to take as many pictures of this day as possible because this video, this recorded video is not even going to be enough to contain the power that's going to happen today. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm, my hands are sweating. I, I couldn't sleep. I was telling Dr. Lomax I couldn't even sleep last night. That's why my energy is not as high as it is. I got coffee over here. I got um, a Red Bull waiting in the kitchen. <laughs> my kidneys are going to kill me if I drink that. But <laughs> I got to get this energy from, so I couldn't even sleep. I couldn't, I was tossing and turning until about 6 a.m. Then it was time for prayers. It was like, okay, well, I guess can't do that no more. So I got up, got the kids ready. I got them quiet. So say an extra prayer to keep them quiet. But I am trying to get to this power and this, this plug-in. So here we go. I am welcoming you to the 2021 inaugural ambassadorship of very fine humanitarians, as I mentioned, and each one of these humanitarians in their own right has done extraordinary things. Um, the bulk of this will be ambassadors that are newly appointed to the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights for the outstanding work that they have done in the fellowships that they have taken. In order to even attain this level, you had to have completed three 12 week fellowships. Um, so that's a total of nine months um, and almost a year of just dedicating research, time, talent, energy, effort to the duality of mo both making men and women on equal approach, as well as bettering the society for humanity. And that says something. You know, people get degrees and, and they get accolades in society, honorary or other, for what they have presented in society. But to do the work and to be commended with that work, to have that blood, sweat, and tears, to get on that call and be like, you know what, I don't even want to be here. To sit up here and say that this two-hour meeting should have been a long email and, and I need to be uh, off of this in two minutes. 
is to say that you stayed the course, that you dealt with those two hour videos that should have been a long email and that you stayed the course in this. And I have to give you your roses while you can smell them. And today we're putting that crown on your head. And we're saying, not only are you gonna represent the world, but you're gonna represent an organization, a sovereign organization that has dedicated the last five years to dedicating this work to be done. The last five years that uh, the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights has been active and potent has been the work of the last 30 years in medicine. Um, and I've set this tone because I wanna make sure that this goes forward. I work inc inclusively with the human rights activism that is in this world. And that is to include uh, the United Nations, the African Union, ECOWAS, and um, of course, locally, and the thing that it was actually the seed in the ground that allowed this to happen was the birthing project out of um, the West. It was in California, now it's in New Mexico because we have Her Excellency here, Dr. Catherine Ald Trujillo, Queen Mother Extraordinaire. Um, she's gonna be honored today as well. Um, we also have um, on schedule, Dr. Karen Lomax, who's gonna be honored as well. And then of course, Her Royal Highness, Queen Aminata Koito, that is going to, that is going to be um, um, given this accolade as well. And I think um, it's going to be a very, very uh, prosperous day. I know people are gonna leave surprised and uh, welcomed. I'm just gonna, I don't wanna give it away because I'm one that, I'll give you the end of the movie just because I saw it and I was excited. So I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it today. I'm not gonna do it today, I promise. Um, so I wanna thank you for joining us for the guests that are in the waiting room and those, I mean, in the back room. Um, and those that are uh, in front of us, I want to welcome you. Um, as always, we want to open our elders, our, our elders here. So we are going to open in prayer. Um, and then I'm going to give brief opening remarks about what, what it is, why it is, and what it is that we're going to be doing. So Queen Mother, if you can, as always, open us up in prayer, please. Yeah, you're on mute. Yes, and I did not respond to the last email you sent me four day this morning because I did not want to encourage you. I wanted you to go to sleep, but you were dreaming. You were in the dream world and you were like someplace else with a vision. And so I so, I understand that. And I am, I am so happy to, to, to be able to say, dear God, we thank you. We thank you with all our hearts for this moment. We thank you for your believing in us and you're sending us a leader and you, you're you giving us the vision to see that leader and the courage to grasp that leader and follow her as she births that leadership in all of us. We thank you that you have given us the stamina to stay the course. And we thank you for this moment where we come together and see what it is we have done, who we have done it with, and to rest in that excitement as we then move forward. And we thank you for that. Amen, Ashe. Amen, Aho Ashe. And so it is, I thank you. I welcome you today to this historic moment. It is a moment in time where we have to reflect on the leadership that we have in front of us. It is also a moment in time where we have to open what it is that we are doing in society and be able to welcome those that have been doing it with us, holding our hand, walking alongside of us and being the greatest advantageousness of action that they could be. We know not what we do each day that we open up our eyes and we go about our mission. We know not what is planned, nor that we will make it to the end of the day, but we do know that what we do is sacred. It is honored and it is available. Through the actions of our hands, through the mobilities, the agilities and the dexterities of our mind, we know that we are coming forth right now to do a great thing. Now, whether we see it as an action of service or we see it as a kindness that is given in turn, these random acts of kindness in leadership allows us to know the servitude will continue. For each and every one of us that comes forward and gives this benefit to society, we usher in a newness that allows us to know that someone else has been taken care of. Service rendered, we know that we will come away knowing that something we have done today has made a difference in the life of people around us. 
And we know that whatever it is that we stand for, that we have given that goodness and the honor and glory to our Lord, whatever we call him. We know that what we have is a precedence in front of us, never to be done again or replicated in that same faction. That moment never given back to us, that time never returned. But we do know in this moment that we, get, we are given an extra benefit that allows each and every one of us to go forward, to do it again, to replicate it in another way for another soul in another manner of service. And on today, we are recognizing individuals that have done this so much and so far for the greatness of people without care and wonder for payment, recompense or reward. They have done it because it stands apart from knowing that things have to change and we are now been called to do it. Our service is here, our goodness has been noted and what it is is a venture going forward that our generations will be able to feel and be reflected upon. And I ask each and every one of you to come together today with me to celebrate these individuals because of their hard work, because of their dedication and their due diligence to making sure that society has been offered the goodness. Now I say this with a shaken mouth, with a unstilled voice and with a sweaty hand, as I mentioned. And I say this because I know not what this mission does. I know not where this mission is going, but I do know it's going places. I stand here not knowing what it is that tomorrow will bring, but I know today will be supplemented with the understanding that these people are here in society. And I know that whatever this mission is, I'm walking forth in a discipline of unknowing. Walk by faith, not by sight, is the word mm -hmm. that is written in every contextual religious text in some way, in some form. Walk by faith and not by sight is allowing me to get up every morning. It also allows the mission of the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights to be given. Do you want to see her daddy? Where you at? Put a shirt on, come on here. It is allowed, it is allowing me as the leader of this mission to know that there is a tomorrow that will be offered to women, to men, to children, and to the world, whether here in the diaspora or in the continent divide. And I am standing on this mountain right now. And I'm standing here with you as a servant and as someone that is very appreciative of all that you have done for humanity. I stand with you, ladies and gentlemen. And I stand because I know not what tomorrow brings, but I know that what it is that we have right now is a great opportunity to open doors for many. As leaders, we are going to be in this mission to begin again and to begin anew. And even though we don't know what that possibility is, I close this oration knowing that I'm gonna be doing it with you and it's gonna be all right. I thank you today. I thank you in this way and I thank you with every fiber of my being for being here with me today. I am moving by an obedience that I know not what the power is going to be given to me, but I do move. And I move with a slow, still pace that rides in a cadence of knowing that you too will ride with me. Sometimes when we are Bonnie and Clyde in, in life, <laughs> we don't know what's gonna happen, but we do know we have someone that's gonna ride with us. And we know that there's a trust that is built in that. And I welcome you today to understand that this trust will be garnered with a posterity and a great reverence to the mission in front of us. Welcome. The history of the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights is a humble one. It is one that has been given a great rise in goodness. And today, the Federation opens a great solemn of a chapter. This chapter is dealing with the role of ambassador. Now in the United Nations and my work with the United Nations has allowed me to see so many ambassadors. We have one today um, that is from the African Union. Um, she works so hard and her due diligence is so meaningful. And she's gonna speak to us today about the role of being a diplomat and what that really means. So many times we think it's just adorning a title and wearing pretty clothing and standing in the place and giving titles and accolades. But being an ambassador means you have to do this every day in every way. It's almost like having a, 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 a 
intermittent camera on you every day. Every action you do is going to be televised. Every comment on a post is going to be scrutinized. Every look that you give to someone is going to be picked apart and dismantled. And they're going to see the negativity in it. So you have to make sure that everything you do is going to be cemented in a truth that you can stand by. That if someone critiques you on, you're going to be like, yeah, I meant every word of that. And you're going to say that because the truth in who you are and what you are is going to be that discipline. And that discipline is going to go forward, not through ego and vanity of a title, but because the work is your calling card, that you're going to do this unapologetically and that whatever it is that you do, you're going to do without worry of reward. I don't care if I get paid to birth a baby. I don't, you know how many babies are coming here and, and, and not a dime is transpired, but guess what? I showed up. I don't care how many people say that they weren't going to support the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights because they didn't know what it was and, and they didn't know who it was and they didn't give it validity. It's all right. I, I gave it my own validity. And I have world renowned leaders, as you see here, that are going to make sure that you are in a great space. They are leaders in their own right. And they are going to make sure that you have a space in society in this declaration of this ambassadorship. And you are going to do it the right way. I'm gonna say that again for those in the back. You're gonna do it the right way, the first time. And you're gonna do it because being an ambassador in the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights has an integrity that will not be lost. I say that as a mother, and I give you that look to know <laughs> that I say that as a mother, that integrity will not be lost. And I'm going to stand here until I am no more and I'm gonna hold that integrity intact. And I'm gonna hold you responsible and accountable. That's a word most people don't like to hear because that means that there's a responsibility behind it. But I'm gonna hold you accountable for this role that you're gonna to accept today. And each and every one of you ambassadors that have been given that title because of your work in the fellowships are going to be heard today. You're going to be heard, your voice is gonna be heard and you're going to give a, a difference. But the role of ambassador means that you are going to stand on the integrity of the title that you've been given, not for ego sake, but of discipline sake. We're going to give the world the example in real time of what a real ambassador looks like. Well, they will call you that before you give them your title. Well, they will see that presence in you, that God consciousness in you as you go forward in this. The role of ambassadorship has nothing to do with any acronym or any letters that you represent. It has to do with the dignity that's inside of you before you accept that role. It has to deal with your heart mind, the thing that gives you that passion to do it regardless of reward, regardless of recognition. That heart mind that allows us to stand in what it is that we're doing today and that role of ambassador will precede you. You know, I, I read a post the other day that says, I'm going to work hard so that one day I don't have to be introduced when I walk into a room. That's powerful. That's powerful. That is what my, that's what I want for my spirit. If I could ask for a last right or a last thing on my tombstone, I wanted, I wanted to say, I walked into a room and didn't need to be uh, introduced <laughs> because I want that work to go forward. So today we are going to start that path. Today is day one. We're going to hit that reset button and we're going to, as Dr. Lomax says, we're going to script that page. We're going to write that book to say that the role of ambassador will change. It will change and it will change because we are the change makers. That's why we're here today being honored. I thank you and I appreciate you today. We are going to be starting with the keynote speaker and our keynote speaker needs no introduction. This woman, I have been following her. I am woman crushing her on every opportunity that I can. I, every time I see her doing something in the African Union, I'm just like, I wanna be like her when I grow up. I, I, I want to have a place in the African Union one day. I, I do wanna have something in region six that, that I can do and say that I am supporting it. United Nations is nice, but the African Union is where my heart is. Um, and I said that unapologetically. Um, I want to do something for the continent, in the continent, by the continent, for the terms and the pleasure of the continent. And I want to do this for my people. So um, I say this um, with sincere humbleness. Thank you. 
thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Um, and without further ado, I introduce to you Her Royal Highness Queen Aminata Koita, the Fulbi Queen of the Ashanti tribe. She is the African Union representative for Region 6, and she is of the Fulbi tribe of Ghana. And I will have her um, tell about who she is and why she is in her, her speech today. But Queen Aminata, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Peace and blessings, everyone. My name is Aminata Koyita, as Dr. Ali said, and I am a member of the Royal House of Fulbe, and my title is the Magajia Chigaba Fulbe in the Ashanti region of Ghana. Now, what that means is I'm in charge of economic development for the region. I worked really, really hard for that. I, I have many projects going on on the continent and here in the United States in the form of economic development. So I work really hard on behalf of our people to bring them their um, needed resources to just for them to function in everyday life. Um, and I would like to thank Dr. Ali for allowing me this opportunity to share this space with such wonderful people who are dedicated to humanity. And Dr. Ali, let me just say this to you. You are doing the work of the sixth region because you serve all of the diaspora and we are blessed to have you um, and just to be in your presence. So I want you to be encouraged today knowing that you are doing the work that your heart um, leads you do because you have created this organization and it's phenomenal and you need to know that and be praised just for that because you bring a lot to the diaspora we are blessed to have you and I want everybody on here to know that I share your passion and I'm so very excited to stand with you and support you as you embark on this new journey in life now in my role as the Magajia Chigaba I meet with government officials local community leaders, diplomats, and change makers all over the world. And I've learned a lot in my journey. I've been doing this for many years now and I've learned so many things just by trial and errors, um, failures also, you know, I count those as successes because you learn something from them. And today I would like to share with you some of the things which I've learned over the years about what it means to be an ambassador, the importance of the role, and the power that you now hold as a leader in the field of, of diplomacy. So in this case, you're an ambassador and you're an official representative of the Federation of Gender and Human Rights. That is huge. One of, you're gonna be one of the many faces of this international organization. And as such, you are charged with representing the interests of the organization. You must do that with integrity. You must have a high standard of ethics. You must be truthful and you must walk in a manner that brings glory to the title that you now hold. Um, you're a high ranking official, which means you're meant to embody the organizational identity in not only your demeanor, but your appearance, your ethics and your values. You will assist with content creation, event marketing, brand awareness and promotions, meetings with officials from other organizations and possibly government officials as you do this all important work in the field of gender and human rights. And since you'll be working on an international level, I would like to share with you some things which I've learned over the years which may aid in your success. The first thing I would like to share with you is that you need to learn the art of diplomacy. Now that you're a diplomatic leader, meaning you're going to be exposed to all types of people. And diplomacy means you understand that everyone has their own feelings, their own opinions, their own ideas about any given topic. And your job involves dealing with others without causing any conflict or hurt feelings. And that can sometimes be really hard, but a true leader will appreciate and take into consideration the other party's emotions and ideas with no matter what their personal feelings about the topic are. The second thing I would like to encourage you to do is to always seek a win-win solution. Now, very few people are able to negotiate in a manner that comes out with a happy ending for all the parties involved. And this is a quality of a diplom diplomatic leader. They make deals and solve problems while managing conflicts and keeping relationships intact. They realize that leadership is all about considering the opinions and suggestions of both parties and coming up with solutions that both sides are willing to accept. Now, great leaders lead in a way that no one feels patronized or influenced. And true diplomatic leaders do not let their own biases or judgments hinder the outcomes. 
They are willing to give everyone a fair chance and allow them to flourish in their own personal regard. They do not project their version of the perfection of others and always encourage growth. Communicate and not state. This is very, very essential. If you go in with just your own opinions and ideas, you will never be able to listen to what others have to pitch in. Let them give their suggestions and take time to ponder over them. You never know when someone else may come up with something better or even more productive. In other words, true diplomatic leaders and ambassadors, they listen. The other thing I really want to impress upon you today is to learn the protocol and etiquette. There are rules to this game, you guys. And the way you address a fellow ambassador is different from the way you address a government official, which is different from the way you address someone in the royal family, which is different from the way you address a leader in a community organization. Learning this protocol and etiquette can be the difference between getting through the door and leaving with a new partner or collaboration and having the door shut in your face without even getting a chance to make your case. The new role which you now hold is very powerful and you'll be operating on a new level with people of influence locally, nationally, and globally. You'll be standing in the gap and speaking on issues that fall within the mission and goals of the organization. That means having a working knowledge of the organization and what it does, how it does it, why it does it, and what it hopes to achieve. And everything you do in the capacity as an ambassador represents those very things. This is also a political appointment. And although you're not called to be a politician, your role as ambassador may put you in situations where you're dealing with them on topics like legislation, or maybe you'll be presenting ideas and suggestions to them or meeting with them in the role as an advocate. Either way, you now have the ability to affect change as never before. Use this new power to be the voice of the unheard and build new bridges of hope for those who have lost all hope. In closing, I would like to personally welcome you to the family of global ambassadors and let you know that I am here to serve Dr. Ali first and foremost, the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights, and I'm also here to serve you. So if you have any questions on etiquette and protocol, you can get my information from Dr. Ali and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So congratulations to all your ambassadors and the ambassadorial appointments that you guys are receiving today. And I look forward to serving all of you alongside of you with humanity. Let's change this world together, one conversation and one action at a time. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much. <laughs> why I'm girl crushing on her you see you see wow that was so fluid I want to I want to be able to do that one day I am going to offer a thank you and a humbleness of gratitude for you your excellency thank you so very much I want to um uh, I want yeah thank you just just thank you you have truly taught me a lot um in coming into the African Union and meeting you uh, through the African Union, I have truly been taught a lot. Um, I read your post, I, I, I go on your, your events, and I can honestly say I'm still learning. So I thank you for all that you do and all that you do in the African Union. Um, and I look forward to seeing you as we go higher in this and as we do higher and greater things. So thank you, Your Excellency. Next, we have um, our diplomatic speaker. Um, she is our diplomatic speaker for many reasons. Um, she is an ambassador in her own right. She is, um, as you know, Dr. Karen Lomax. <laughs> she is the master life coach. She's founder and CEO of I'm a Hers Girl. I got to say it like that. And <laughs> she is a diplomatic ambassador for the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. She's on our advisory council. She's advisory council lead, and she is reigning from California. So without further ado, she will tell you why she is and who she is as she takes the mic. Thank you, Dr. Lomax, for coming and being a part of this moment in history. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just as her, thank you, uh, Her Excellency, uh, Queen Amanada, that was so well-spoken. <laughs> she took the words literally out of my mouth. Um, she really left me nothing else to speak on, but I did want to say <laughs> um, to Queen Mother, thank you uh, also <laughs> for coming. I was a little nervous when, when I didn't see her either, and because I've been up all night nervous, and I was see? like, I don't see her. And so when I saw her, I was like, okay, now I'm I'm okay. 
<laughs> I can do what I've been called to do. And I'm not going to be long-winded because we don't want this to be longer than it should be. But as Queen Amanata was speaking, um, the term ambassador is not anything really to shout about um, because it does come with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of integrity. Uh, you have to walk a certain way. You have to talk a certain way. You have to present yourself in a certain way. And the rooms that you walk into, you have to know they're not your rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though you walk in with a command type presence, it's still not your room. And so you cannot allow uh, what we are about to embark upon to go to your head. You have to keep a cool head. You're, gonna, you're going to in, encounter others who may not even want to um, talk to you or engage with you because of your gender. Mm -hmm. But that's because they have not heard you speak. And so when you come in, you, you like she said, you don't have to be introduced. When you walk in, just your presence, just your spirit, just your attitude, your behavior, it can sometimes just change the atmosphere of the room in which they will approach you and then start the conversation. So you have to make sure that you stay in a humble type spirit. Um, as she said, this has been a, a long time coming. Uh, I'm a little emotional, so I'm trying, I'm trying to keep my cool um, because again, we were talking about how this was spoken over my life. And I was like, I didn't think um, I would ever you know, get here to this point. And I didn't know by, by which route God was going to do it, but he said he was going to do it. And so I was, when, when uh, Dr. Amina, you know, told me, she was like, well, you know, and I, I didn't even know about it until I saw it on my slide. And I was like, wait, what, what is that? And she, <laughs> she said, don't worry about it. Just wait for the certificate. And I said, oh my gosh. So it all, it all just came in on me and it all started to sink in last night. It's emotional, but I did want to speak to the women in particular. We have to make sure that all the doors that have been opened for us, all, like you said, the glass ceilings that have been shattered for us, the walls that have been torn down for us, the footsteps that have been laid for us, the lives that has been lost for us, the blood that is still yet being shed for us. We cannot let it be in vain. We cannot take this opportunity that we have been given and mess it up. So we have to come in humble. We still mm. have to come in confident. We still have to come in bold, but we still have to come in humble until the room does belong to us. But until then, we need to learn how to navigate and operate in these different spaces with those who once told us that you had no right to be in this room. But mm -hmm. until that day and until we hear it, let's continue to show them that we do belong here. Let's continue to show them that all the while they were saying we should not, we were doing the work. And that's what the term ambassador really means. It means that you've done the work. It means that you're doing the work. It means you're going to continue to do the work and not allow what has happened to you to allow you to move in emotion. But now you're gonna move with clarity. Now you're gonna move with knowledge. Now you're gonna move with confidence and a sense of self. So square your shoulders, but keep your head about yourselves and walk into the room with anything. If you don't take anything from what I say, walk in the room with dignity. You no longer have a reason to hold your head down. And I just thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lomax. <clears throat> you have truly brought a, an asset to the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. You are truly, truly uh, a great lead in our advisory council to make sure that uh, what it is that we do is on the up and up. Um, and I chose um, the, the final say in the, the, the choosing, um, the interns actually chose you, um, but I chose the, to okay it because she brings a military discipline that is far beyond anything. I only did 11 years in the military, just long enough for them to pay for medical school and I was out of there. So don't wanna sound unpatriotic, but I do wanna say that I use them to pay for medical school and I was done. Um, I knew I could make more money civilian side than I could in the military. So that was where I was going with the kids that I was having. So I decided that I was going to take that discipline and make that my stronghold in what I do. But 
you know, Dr. Lomax seems to always have um, mm -hmm. a, a, a quintessential discipline within her. I mean, you could see, you could tell she was in the military. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. And I know everybody says, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? You could tell she was, the discipline in, in the things that she does, it's in order. And it has nothing to do with spirit. It has to do with who she is and what she's ordained. Now, of course, anything God conscious will be in order and will be uh, uh, right and true because um, God is not the author of confusion, but she brings an, an, uh, a, a gel to it. That's the best word I can use. She brings how you place it. And that too is a, a sign of a, an ambassador where you know how to discipline yourself in what you are doing. Um, and it's real time. It's, it's not just the saluting and the standing at attention and the, you know, the 45 degree angle. It's making sure that that uniform is right. The gig lines are straight and the gig lines in your life are straight to make sure that your, your, your salad bowl is looking nice, but the salad bowl, the, the, the flags, the salad bowl is looking nice on your uniform. But that doesn't necessarily put a, a spin, and I'm going to use the word spin on society, on the, the way you can do yourself in life. I'm talking about in the way that you dress yourself in life and address yourself in life. When she mentioned that, um, she touched on that and it triggered something in me that her militaristic stance is her personality. So the military was actually right for her personality because she brings that to that military form. That's why it's easy for her. And I thank you. I thank you. I needed that in my life. I need that discipline, that militaristic discipline. Um, and Dr. Lomax brings that effortlessly. So thank you, Dr. Lomax. And thank you so very much for your service to our country, to our people, and now humanity. So thank you so very much. Um, okay. Um, I have been told that I have a dignitary here. And I believe they are from ECOWAS. And they are here. I'm trying to scroll down. Um, oh, where are they? Oh, maybe they're not on. Okay. I was told that there was someone from Echo Watch that was coming on to give um, um, their opening because there is going, one of you here is going to be representing with Echo Watch in West Africa. Um, and they are, they were going to come on to welcome that person, but I don't see their name. So we're just going to continue, um, with, and if they come in, then we will, we will open them. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if I could stand up with you, I would ask everyone to please rise at this point, um, and welcome the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights presentation of federal ambassadors. We will be reading off their names, where they will be reigning from and what it is that they will be doing with um, their organization. If they will, when they come on, I want you to, um, after I announce your name, I want you to come on. I want you to confirm that you are going to be working in this country. And what is maybe the name of your uh, organization that you're gonna be working with, or maybe some of the people you're gonna be working with. <clears throat> but I want it on record for you to officially announce where you're going to be placed in this ambassadorship um, with the work that you're doing. So. Um, when I call your name and I say where you're from, you're going to repeat your name, where you're from, and then mention what it is that you're going to be doing, um, the work that you're going to be doing, whether it's the name of the organization, whether it's your organization, or what it is that you're going to be doing in your village, okay? Our first one is Augusta Asentiwa Boateng from the Republic of Ghana. She is a... Um, a poet, a writer, and magician in media. <laughs> she is amazing with her, her talents, her gifts, and abilities. She is um, a, a author of a magazine. She also has uh, social media that is crazy popular. I think she's viral in her own right. So, Madam Augusta Asentua Boateng, I welcome you, Your Excellency. Is she here? Uh oh. I thought I saw her here. Oh, wow, 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 wow. She was here. I promise she was here. Okay, well, we'll have her come back when she logs back in. I know she was here. Um, okay, our next ambassador is Madam Sarah Yusuf Williams, representing the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She is a um a consonant 
Um, and I say consonant because her work is the vowel and she has um, been a greatness in our community. Um, and she stands alone to be what it is that we need to see. She's been in every single maternal care fellowship we've offered. She was in the pre-write of the, the think tank. Um, there she is now. Oh, 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 oh. There she is. I'm going to get her on. Uh, Madam Sarah Yusuf Williams, are you there? Madam Sarah Yusuf Williams, are you there? Uh-oh. Madam Williams, can you unmute your mic? Uh, okay. Oh, she, I, we lost her. Okay. All right. I just got a message that the connection was lost. Okay. Um, Madam Williams, um, as I said, has been here since day one. She has um, been the, the champion and a leader in maternal care rights. She has offered a due diligence to women. Uh, Queen Mother knows her very well. She, <laughs> she offers a great siding of, of integrity and discipline. Uh, she is someone that I know will hold the hand of those that work for maternal care rights and those that work in rural areas of uh, the continent uh, to include Nigeria, where she'll be reigning from. Next is um, Ambassador Anthony Anakia Matuli. He will be representing the Republic of Kenya. And this will be a awesome, awesome look to what it is that he will be doing in Kenya. There is right now no maternal care services in the continent of Kenya. And we did our due diligence and research and we know that there are hospitals, but there is no maternal care programs in the, the country of Kenya. Um, there are hospitals that have obstetrics and gynecology, there's NICU units, of course, but there is no cognitive plan for maternal care um, and the reduction of mortality. So he is going to be bringing this plan um, directly there. He is going to also be bringing this uh, to the government themselves and he'll be working with the government. I'm going to be writing feverish letters to help him to be a part of the human rights advocacy program and the minister of health to develop this program so that we will be able to have this as a root um, in the uh, human rights advocacy uh, program and be able to have him lead it. So this is my gift to him for what it is that he's doing to bring to uh, the beautiful country of Kenya. Um, this is Anthony Anakia Matulu. Um, Madam Ama Odomea um, Owako, sorry. I'm sorry, I still sleep. Ama Adomea Amawako, she is um, uh, coming from the Republic of Ghana. If you are here, Madam Ama, can you unmute your mic? Give your name, where you're going to be reigning from and what it is that you're going to be doing with the organizations. Yes, please, I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my name is Ama Odamia Amawako and I'm reading from Ghana, <laughs> West Africa, and I'm going to be collaborating with Augusta because she is also in Ghana with me here. I've realized she has been doing some projects and I've also reached out to some, because I was in the Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Fellowship, I reached out to other organizations like that in Ghana so that I could go with them on their project and then also um with mental health advocacy i'm also working on collaborating with other organizations here so that we can preach the mental health wellness in ghana because that is something that is not really targeted here sometimes you get people um currently we had an issue with a certain comedian who kind of was depressed and started posting a whole lot of bad stuff on his page but then people saw it to be like he was just joking but then that um, mental health wellness has to be preached a lot in Ghana so that is what I'm also going to be focusing on preaching the gospel of mental health wellness because that's something that everybody needs to have because when you are not mentally sound um, everything you are doing is not going to go well with you and then that also goes a long way to um, affect your emotional intelligence as well because when you are mentally healthy you are able to balance your emotions your moods and everything so 
basically that's what I'm going to do. And also I joined OC365, um, Queen Mother introduced me, so I would be working with them as well um, with other projects. So basically I think, but then they, I, I will still be doing more. I will be collaborating with Dr. Amina as well on her projects, yes. So basically that's it, thank you. You're most welcome. It's all it all meshes together. All of it is for the common good. So whatever Queen Mother does is I'm following right behind it. I promise you. So whatever she leads, I follow. Um, I am going to thank you, Your Excellency. I really appreciate that. And I thank you so very much um, for what it is that you do and how you do it for the great country of Ghana. I'm going to reintroduce Madam Her Excellency Augusta Asentua Boateng. Um, if you can unmute your mic. Please um, say your name, where you're going to be working with, or where you're going to be working from, and the organizations you're going to be working with, please. Hi, good afternoon, <laughs> and uh, thank you for having me. I'm sorry, I'm on a road trip, so my network is kind of messing up, but I cannot miss this opportunity to tell Dr. Amina how grateful and how honored I am to be here today to be given this mandate to ensure that the welfare of women and children and men as well keeps going and we keep doing our part to um, make the human race a better one. I am so, so glad and also want to congratulate the other ambassadors here for the great work that we are all doing individually in our different countries. And uh, I want to urge us to keep doing it. And being an ambassador to me, it's not that it's just a title. It actually means a lot of hard work, a lot of um, reaching out to people. And it comes with commitment and consistency as well. And so, yes, I have accepted this ambassadorial position. And I know that it is a huge call on me to do more than I'm doing, to reach out to a lot of more people than I'm doing currently. And um, I am on talks with some members of parliament already and I want to make sure that I reach out to the people that are up there, the people that I can target to ensure that the policies that we are putting in place are for the betterment of women and girls in general, and also for every human being. And so I am in talks with some of the uh, um, ministers of state. I'm trying to reach out to some um, ambassadors from different countries as well. Um, and also with organizations that I've been working with already, they know what I do. Um, at the Foundation of International Gender and Human Rights, and they are just ready with open arms to welcome me and to project the work that I am doing. And yes, I'm going to use the media as I always do, and any other available avenue that I can use to do the work and the mandates of the Foundation of International Gender and Human Rights. And I am so, so honored to be among this beautiful organization that is doing amazing work with an amazing and incredible woman as our lead. I am so, so grateful, Dr. Amina, and to all the amazing women and men on here, I say congratulations to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Augusta. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate the work that you have done. Um, she is going to definitely be um, a great spokesperson with the media that she promotes, um, and I think you're going to see a lot more of her um, because of the work and the phenomenal work that she uh, contributes to. So thank you, Madam Augusta. Um, next, we're going to see uh, Dr. Asma Ubenzi's Leo. I am going to ask for her to unmute her mic and come forward. Dr. Asma, as you know, was our first um, um, Peace Prize winner in creative nonviolence. She has come forward as a true advocate for women. And now, like she said, her toolbox is full and she is armed with many, many tools to do this work. So her ambassadorship has come with ease. So Madam Ambassador, I ask that you come with your name, where you are reigning from and the work that you will be doing. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, Dr. Amina. Thank you, uh, Her Excellency Amina Koita from uh, AU, uh, Queen Mother, Distinguished uh, Ambassadors. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, for me, my name is Asma Ulio, and I am based in Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, I am so much into the issue of women, peace, and security. As you are aware, Nigeria, especially northern part of Nigeria, where I come from, 
even my own state of origin, Adamawa state, has been bedeviled by the activities of insurgent terrorists for a long time. And the uh, aftermath of these uh, activities of these terrorists has always been on women within the communities. We've had of the Dabchi girls that were captured in their schools. We've had of the Chibok girls. We've had of so many uh, abducted girls in school. So uh, there, there's just so much that uh, that is in my box that I think I need to unveil one step at a time. But as it stands, gender-based violence, human peace and security is the area I will be passionately working on. And uh, I would like to collaborate with every international partner because uh, I want to start at that level, coming from the international, because already we've done some uh, policy issues working with communities at the local level. And for us to have huge results, it's important that we bring in the international communities, even though we have a whole lot of them in the Northeast working with these women. But I think so much more needs to be known about what is happening. And then we need a lot of intervention so that the perspectives of these women, their priorities, their concerns will be taken into cognizance at the global level. So for me, this is where I intend to be working. So I am open to work with any of the UN agencies that will be willing uh, to uh, I'll be representing the International Federation of Gender and Human Rights. And I can speak uh, because I have had opportunities definitely speaking engagement within the UN. So some of these opportunities, uh, it happens that the deputy under secretary general is also a Nigerian. So given the opportunity, it's something that we can work together for her to know what Nigeria is doing with uh, Federation of International Gender and Human Rights, and also the uh, African Union and ECOWAS at the sub-regional level. So for me, this is where I intend to see. As, as, as the days go by, I think the vision will be clearer as to how to start and when to start. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. I really appreciate you. Um, His Excellency Tijani is actually a member of the assembly in UN um, and he, he has served uh, Nigeria very, very well and risen to the uh, general assembly. Um, so I am so impressed with him and so impressed with the works that are coming forth for uh, rights and diplomacy. So thank you so very much. Um, I am going forward with uh, Madam Aisha Mohamed Bello, who is representing the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She is also the founder of the Voice of the Girl, Child and Vulnerable Populations. Um, and she will be talking um, specifically about that. Um, so Madam Aisha, can you at least um, unmute your mic and uh, be able to explain what you do in your work, in your body of work? Thank you. Ambassador, I'm so sorry. I my camera went out at the same time your computer was going bad. That's what we're feeling. Like. Um, no, I can't. I just heard you say that, but I can't. We can't hear what you're saying because there's a, there's a static in the connection. Um. I don't know. Um, oh gosh, my IT guy is trying because my camera went out at the same time yours went out. So it's it's truly the technology. Um, 
if you're a way that you can go out and come back in and then I'll bring you back in as soon as I see you. How about that? Because I think it's a connection. All right. Um, thank you so much. But thank you so much for what you do anyway. And the many ways that you do it. Um, I know you're going to orate on what are some of the things that you're going to be doing when you come back in. But I do want to make sure that um, you are recognized for what you do in Nigeria. You're going to be working with other world helpers in this ambassadorship. And I can't say anything, but thank you for making it to this point. So thank you again, Madam Aisha. All right, His Excellency Fawad Ali Langa, representing the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. This gentleman has done the work. I can't say anything, but Alhamdulillah, which is hallelujah in Christianity. <laughs> so know that there is a greatness that is coming forth from this brother and he is doing it for women, for men, for his country especially. And I have great honor in representing him in the Federation of International Agenda and Human Rights. The trust is there, the integrity is evident, and I open the floor to you, Ambassador Fawad Ali Langa. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Her Excellency. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah rahman rahim Okay, yeah, once again, uh, great innings, and there's still more to come. And uh, yeah, it, it just began. And like uh, yesterday, I've said, uh, it's a big word, ambassador, and uh, we just began it. And uh, we have a long way to go. And uh, on the behalf of Pakistan, I'm honored to, to be chosen. And of course, I'm lucky enough to work on to that. And uh, so far, what we did is actually just, just setting up this stone. But we have a huge wall to create with all our team members. So I'm thankful to Dr. Gazala. I'm sure we are working together. And my uh, sister Noreen, of course, inshallah, on behalf of Pakistan, will be definitely look forward to work together and uh, put forward all those major notions with respect to the uh, uh, these uh, maternity policies, which we've been working from last one year actually, and urge our our uh, decision makers, authority, as well as the government, with the help of uh, African Union, ECOWAS, and United Nations, and of course our organization FITA to put forward this things and somehow get regularized what we learned, what we made from, uh, from last year so far. Definitely, inshallah, we'll look forward for that. And uh, we have a long way to work on to and keep learning, keep working and work as a team and put forward what we have learned so far on to that. I look forward to work on to that. And inshallah, it's a great, great, great honor to be the part of this great organization along with my uh, colleagues, my team, Dr. Khan and uh, Noreen uh, Farhan as well. We always work as a team. And I would say like, without team, I'm nothing. My team is a great, and as, as a great team onto that. And definitely we'll, we'll look forward the best we can do that with all our, uh, you can say mentors and One of them, and the best one is, of course, at the end, uh, our, uh, you can say, people who are here to help us. And of course, all of our uh, uh, colleagues who, who have been the part of this cohort. Uh, and inshallah, we look forward for that. And definitely, we'll keep doing on to that until we say goodbye to this world, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I thank you so very much. I didn't know that there was going to be um, so much in Pakistan that we have to do and unpack for the women and the men there. So I look forward to that, um, that work. And I look forward to you. Thank you, uh, Ambassador. All right, the newest doctor in the family, doctor, <laughs> I don't even know if he's here. Um, if you would, could you unmute your mic? You will be doing um, um, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria and as well for the work that you will be commissioned to do. Dr. Omosu Oluwafemi, please unmute your mic. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, uh, Her Excellency, distinguished uh, ambassadors, uh, Queen Mother, and then everyone in this meeting. 
I am very grateful for this opportunity. And um, my name is Oluwafemi, Dr. Oluwafemi Omoshui uh, from Nigeria. And um, I'll be working uh, with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement to ensure that women are uh, included in this international trade. Looking at, uh, I'm sure most of us must have heard about African Continental Free Trade Area. Based on my, based on my experience in international uh, trade, I realized that uh, there are possibilities that women might likely be excluded. Looking at what the society is saying and what is, uh, what is the objective of African Continental Free Trade Agreement? Uh, it's create a single market, deepen the economy integration of the continent. It's also in the movement of capital and people facilitating investments, move towards the uh, establishment of the future of a continental custom union and um, to achieve sustainable and inclusive social economic development, gender equality and structural transformation within member states. So I'll be working with series of um, uh, the likes of Federal Ministry of uh, Trade and Investment to ensure that women are included in this international trade so that uh, 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 understanding we have we have the likes of um, uh, Dr. Nkojo Wiala as the Director General of World Trade Organization. We have these women that are inspiring other women in the world, but I realize that some women are actually not exposed to these things. In Nigeria and even in Africa, we, we have more women in business. But when we talk about uh, uh, financial inclusion, when we talk about digital inclusion, women are mostly excluded. Nigeria has a population of 200 million, 100 million adults. Women, we have more women that are financially excluded. So I'll be driving this with a lot of stakeholders, SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises, to ensure that women get their business out of their shore. Women in Nigeria get their business out of Nigeria to other countries. Women in Ghana get, out, get their business out of Ghana. Women in Kenya get their business out of, uh, out of Kenya. I'll be working with so many stakeholders in this regard and I've started this project. And I would like to work with the uh, Federation of International Gender and Human Rights to also support me in this drive. And I'm sure that uh, Our Excellency Dr. Mina is here, is available for me. And um, uh, for me to execute this under his uh, administration as the founder of uh, FIRE. And I'm very sure that uh, as I've started this, even uh, recently, just a few days ago, I submitted an application to Google, uh, uh, Google Impact Challenge, to ensure that women are included. So I'll be advocating majorly for uh, gender inclusion, especially women inclusion in trade and investment across Africa. Thank you very much for this opportunity, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Oluwafemi. Um, I appreciate all that you do and the work that you are bringing forth in the community. Thank you so very much. And congratulations again. Next Thank is you. Dr. Ghazalia Khan. She is a powerhouse in her own right. This woman, I tell you, if I could bottle her and clone her, she would be in every community out here. Her, her dedication, her due diligence, and her effort is truly seen and you'll hear from her own words what it is that she will be doing in Pakistan with Ambassador um, uh, Fawad Langa um, and, Nur and um, Madam Nurin. And she will be doing the work um, in policy. She will be doing the work in government. And I know that she will definitely be serving women. So without further ado, Dr. Ghazalia Khan, welcome your excellency. Assalamu alaikum. And a very good evening. Thank you so much. I am very proud. I feel very honored and very proud that today I am a part of the, this family. I'm always part of this family, but today I can say that Federation of International Gender and Human Rights is my home. And uh, I am ready to serve uh, Federation of International Gender and Human Rights throughout my life. Uh, I am open always to work with UN, uh, ECOWAS and African Union nationally and internationally. And uh, we as a team, uh, we loved this journey. And uh, really I, I'll miss these days. Uh, it, it was a whole one year 
and uh, i can't believe it it was just like our uh, university and college days it's remind me that we worked very hard we worked with uh, very discipline and even we covered each other uh, in different uh, tough times but i love this all and uh, it gave me a very a unique sense of power and a unique uh, experiences i gained from this uh, all um, journey and i pray from allah that uh, at this point he enable us to work for the humanity and serve the humanity so inshallah inshallah we will make you proud dr amina thank you so much you're so welcome alhamdulillah you've already made me proud that's why you're sitting here today that's why you are among us and that's why your leadership is being celebrated today so thank you dr khan thank you for all that you do for women in pakistan thank you for all that you are doing period um in the world for the world um and what you like you say you know it's it the african union needs you um for the work that you're doing and we're going to pair in this because all of the the uh, diaspora welcomes you and welcomes the work that you do so i know that there will be a place for you in in the continent as well inshallah thank you so very much um our next one is madam ambassador rukaya ibrahim she's representing the federal republic of nigeria and she will be coming forward to tell what it is that she's going to be doing why it is that she's going to be doing and what organization she's going to be representing madam ambassador ibrahim hello assalamu alaikum good day to everyone my name is rukaya ibrahim i'm an education program specialist in nigeria I have been working um, in girl child education, women empowerment, and I'm delving into prevention of sexual exploitation and abuse. And um, in the girl child education, we have been boosting enrollment of girl child, um, sustaining re retention of the girl child in school. And we have been supporting the girl child to prevent child dropping out from school. Um, the name of my organization is Society for Gender Peace and Community Development. We are um, working with Federation of um, um, Female Lawyers, Ministry of Women Affairs, and other CSOs. And um, we want to expand and see how we will partner with international partners like the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. And also, I am and I'm grateful to the I mean, for not letting the seed of the idea to do this, they for not let us sit the I am my own to build. Madam Ibrahim, Madam Ibrahim, uh, we, we're losing your connection. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we lost it completely. Okay. Um, Madam Ibrahim, thank you so very much. You're here? Okay, yeah, we lost it completely. Okay, um, let's go back really quick before we go further. I want to catch her in case the, the connection breaks. Madam Aisha um, <clears throat> Bello is here. I'm going to go back. Um, uh oh, no, 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 Mister. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to have her speak 
Um, Madam Aisha, if you could take about two minutes um, and say what it is that you were saying before so we can have it recorded for posterity um, to be able to announce what it is that you're going to be doing. Madam Aisha? Oh no. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Life is good. Okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aisha Bello. I'm the founder and executive director, Voice of the Child and Vulnerable People Foundation here in Nigeria. And I want to give thanks to Almighty Allah for making this a success. And also I want to appreciate Dr. Amina Ali for this opportunity. We came, we saw, and we conquered. And it's time now to move to the next level. We are already, already beginning work on gender-based violence, but today we are here to continue and also to improve in what we are doing. Today, I feel like in the presence of everyone here, to support the Federation of International Agenda and Human Rights Mission, and to be among the change makers, those that would, those that are going to change the narratives of women and girls in our community. Voice of the Girl, Child, and Born Advocacy Group Organization. We advocate for the rights of women, girls and other vulnerable people in the society. One of the girls that provide psychosocial support, legal support, and um, medical services in the aid of our partners. And um, we hope to partner with both local and international organizations. For now, we are working on some gender-based violence projects with the African Network of Adolescents and Young Persons Development, Education Has Vaccine, and also United Nations Population Fund. And we are willing to partner with more organizations that will um, advance and empower women and girls in our communities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Aisha. I really appreciate you. Um, we also have um, His Excellency Anthony Anakia here. So we're going to go back to him um, now that we have him here. Um, Ambassador Anakia, uh, excuse me, Matuli, uh, could you unmute your mic and state uh, your name, of course, where you're going to be uh, uh, reigning from? And then um, just give us a snippet, you know, a couple of seconds of what it is that you're going to be doing with this ambassadorship, please. My name is uh, Ambassador Anthony Anadem, truly. I'm privileged to be an uh, officially appointed representative of uh, the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. And having been with FIGA for, I think it's almost three years now, I've known Amina for quite some time. You managed to persuade me to change profession to be a humanitarian. And I, uh, I must appreciate that this was a noble course. And currently here in Kenya, there has been a bit of bureaucracy, but um, my organization is under registration, the registration process. I think it should be, it has overstayed because of the lockdowns, but I'm hoping that it should be up and running, but I've already rolled out a few programs uh, regarding women empowerment and uh, mitigation of sexual and gender-based violence. So I'm carrying about that project. I'm talking to churches, schools, and uh, other institutions around to ensure that they are fully sensitized. And then in the few coming days, starting June, I'll be rolling out shelters in five counties in Kenya, women shelters, those who have been uh, abused, those who are you know, living in uh, abusive marriages, we shall have to take them into our shelters and uh, rehabilitate them for a period of about six months maximum. So I'm targeting each shelter house out of the five will be handling 12 women. So that means per year, 
I'll be running about, that is 60 times 12. So in six months, I'll be having uh, about 60. I'll be having 60 women in six months. So roughly 120 in a year that I shall rehabilitate and ensure that they are fully settled, they are on their feet and that they are integrated, reintegrated into society. But I don't advocate per se for separation. So where there is a room for reconciliation and then a return to normalcy, the ladies will go back to their previous marriage. But where there is no room for that based on the circumstances, we reintegrate them to a totally different environment where they shall have a hand in choosing. And then we give them the support that they require to start a small enterprise and be able to fend for their families because I'm catering for women survivors plus the children accompaniment that they may come up to the age of four years. So that is what I'm doing already. I have set up a group with about 10. Some of them were part of bigger and I'm working with them like Faith, Faith Mutoka. I know you can remember her. I'm working with her on this project, Kadi Momo. And it's in a high gear. I think the beginning June, there will be a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of media talk about what it is that we shall be doing. So thank you so, so much for this training, for your motivation and your candidness and compassion in pursuing women empowerment up to the letter, such that women must be given a space because when you take care of one woman, that is a community. You take care of like six women, that is a global agenda. You have transformed the entire globe. So I'm very happy to be part of this transformational agenda. Thank you so, so much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Matuli. Thank you so much. Kenya is so blessed to have you. Um, you're going to be working with other world helpers, I know, um, when you get your internships, um, I mean, excuse me, your interns and your fellows under the projects. I know this is going to be a, a game changer for Kenya. So thank you for being at the helm. Thank you for um, uh, astounding this. And thank you for doing it as soon as June, because this seems like, like you say, a year's project, but you're going to kick it off and have it up and running by June. So God bless you. Kenya will definitely be more blessed because of it. So thank you so much, sir. Um, next is um, His Excellency Hussein Hamza, who is reigning from the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is coming to open up guidance for men and the, the masculine voice in Nigeria. So um, His Excellency, I am going to ask if you can um, open up your mic. I can't see. Oh, there you are. Um, open up your mic and please tell us um, your name, where you're going to be reigning from, and of course, uh, what work you're going to be doing. Thank you very much, Dr. Hamina. I really appreciate your kindness towards humanity. And uh, I give thanks to Almighty Allah who gave us the opportunity for us to witness today. And also, I thank everyone. Congratulations to us. And my name is uh, Hussein Hamza. I'm from Nigeria. And inshallah, I will be working with uh, Rescue Week International where we educate and empower women and also how they can defend themselves against uh, gender-based violence in their community. And also, I will be partnering with uh, Ambassador Aisha Mohammed Bello since uh, we are from uh, the same state, which is a uh, Kaduna state, so that we can uh, implement and also big enough policy how we can uh, protect women in our state and in our community and in our country at large. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Hussein. I really appreciate it. I, I just, I just had a moment, y'all. Um, this is happening. <laughs> this is really happening. This is happening. This is happening, and I'm humbled. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you, Your Excellencies. I apologize. Thank you very much. I'm. I apologize. I. I don't. I don't mean to get emotional, but this is really happening. This work is really happening. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Queen Mother, thank you for being my mentor and thank you for uh, pushing me. Uh, Dr. Lomax, thank you for telling me to go to bed and uh, 
<laughs> and and uh, your excellency, uh, Queen Aminata, thank you for being an example in real time as to what it is that we're to do. And I wanna thank each and every one of you uh, here. Uh, before we move on, I just wanna direct everyone to their um, inboxes of their email. If you have not um, looked yet, you should have um, an email from me uh, welcoming you to the uh, ambassadorship. Um, I had asked everyone to check their emails now, um, also to receive uh, your accolades for today, uh, to receive your official announcement, to receive your official um, precedent, um, and to welcome it. Um, and for those of you that see a surprise in your box, I want to thank you for accepting that. Um, and if you will, um, when we give that chance um, toward the end to um, say a few words about it. And I'm, again, I won't give away the ending of the, of the movie, but uh, thank you so very much. Uh, next is Sarah Dansoho from the Republic of Nigeria. Sarah has been amazing, amazing, amazing in the work that she has been doing. Um, she too has been here since day one um, of the maternal care. She has been opening her doors to women um, in her community. She sent me letters and, and notes on what on WhatsApp telling me to have another mommy that's doing this and I have a woman that's doing that. And she's been doing the work before the paper even came. So I have to recognize her today. And if she's here, can you please unmute your mic um, and please give us a few words, uh, Sarah and Lottie. Dan Soho, Madam Ambassador Sarah and Lottie Dan Soho. Uh oh, she may be gone. I see the other Sarah Yusuf. Um, okay, um, so we celebrate you today, Madam Ambassador, and we allow you to understand that this is your day, and we congratulate you for all that you do, all that you have been doing, and the work that you will continue under this ambassadorship. Um, this one, this young lady here, I, I don't know if she, is she even here on here? Because I thought I saw her. This young lady has given me reason to celebrate. Um, there is um, a, a cadence that comes with fluidity in the work. Um, there's a, a certain rhythm, a flow even. Um, and she's brought it to the table. And I can't say anything but thank you. Um, and I want to allow her to, I want you to hear uh, what she's going to be doing. And I want you to hear it from her mouth because it is amazing work and it's something that I'm really, really impressed with. Um, so without further ado, Madam Ambassador Ahiyanko uh, Iwalola uh, Oluwasei, if you can unmute your mic and give us some words of, of love. <laughs> Uh oh, you uh, please unmute your mic. Unmute. Your mic. Hello. 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 We hear you. We hear you. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, and good evening. My name is Iyanacho Iwalola Huluashi. Um. Um, from Nigeria, presently in Abuja. Uh, I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy. And uh, I really appreciate this time. I thank God for this opportunity. And I bless the name of the Lord for uh, your life, ma'am, Dr. Amin Ali. I thank God for your precious life. And uh, I really, um, I'm using this opportunity to say a big congratulations to everybody. I'm happy to be part of this family. I've been part of this family. And the day one I heard about this uh, program, I determined that I'm going to be part of this. And like I said, my name is Iana Cho from Abuja. I once worked with um, Educating Nigeria Girls in New Enterprises. International Youth Our Service uh, in Nigeria. I decided to go into serving humanity generally. And uh, since then, I'll be cooking a project. And this project is in me. I'll be cooking a project that has a um, um, that has initiatives, five initiatives about education, orphanage, home, GBV, shelters, health, and also empowerment. And uh, apart from that, I'm very happy because I met two um, about
ambassadors in the house that are ahead of me personally. I would love to be partnering with. I'm presently working with the Shepherd Mentorship Foundation under the leadership of Mrs. Alorita in Abuja. And uh, I would love to uh, focus more on educating Nigeria girls, especially, you know, I'm staying at the central north, I mean, the central north of Nigeria. I would really love to uh, go into that because it has been my passion, it has been my dream. At times, it uh, it takes my art seeing girls, young girls on the street doing nothing where others, where the mate are in school. So I would love to do that because I'm a teacher and uh, I would love to partner with UNICEF especially and also starting with Ministry of uh, Women Affairs and World Health Organization. And presently, thank God, I'm part of this beautiful family, uh, Federation of International Aid and Women Rights. And uh, I don't know if the ambassadors in the house if they will permit me later, I will have to book an appointment with uh, Madam Rukayati Ibrahim and Asha Bello, since they are ahead of me in this journey. So I would love to learn from them and I would love to partner with them. Uh, thank you very much, Ma. I'm very, very grateful. I'm very, very grateful. And thank God for your beautiful life. And uh, my appreciation also to um, Queen Mother in the house. I really thank God for your life. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. I really appreciate it. And uh, yes, our elders are truly, truly solid in our community. I wouldn't be anything without them. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for all the work that you do. I'm looking forward to working with you and being um, by your side in this work. So thank you so very much. All right. So that is what we are doing for the ambassadors now for the surprise. <laughs> And some of you are like, what is she up to? Yeah, I love surprises. I love surprises. I love when you come home, um, um, the kids come home and they just like, mommy, I got good grades and I'm you know, having a bad day. So I love surprises. Um, and one of the ones that I like to give are good surprises to those that have earned it. Um, in keeping with my grandmother, give people the roses while they're here to smell them. I do want to give a great credence and, and honor to this leadership uh, body. So without further ado, I'm going to announce the, the leaders of this. Um, so as ambassadors, you will be doing the work, but there will be people that you will be coming to in your leadership. And these will be people that you will be answering to, or at least responding to when you have your think tanks and your intelligentsias and your, your uh, creativity in making this work happen. So I am going to announce the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights Diplomatic Leaders in this ambassadorship. And the first one is Dr. Bill Keese Williams. And she is going to be, um, she has been noted to be the ambassador to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So she is going to be the ambassador um, that we have cited. Um, and those that are working in Nigeria will be uh, coming to her and reporting to her. So she reports back um, and she will be your ambassador for one year. Um, and then you will vote for another ambassador and you will allow another ambassador to step in that place. She is also able to stay for a second year, a second term, but each slot will be for one calendar year starting on today. <laughs> and today is the eve of the International Day for Maternal Health and Rights because tomorrow is the day. And um, she is going to be starting that um, a fellowship in as your ambassador for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So Dr. Bill Keese Williams, as I uh, soothe my granddaughter who is complimenting what I say right now, I'm gonna ask that you unmute your mic and explain what it is that you will be doing in this body of work. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you so much. Let me first give honor to whom honor is due, Dr. Amina's granddaughter. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would like to move forward by saying that I am grateful to the creator of the world. I'm grateful for the patience and support of Dr. Ali and the leadership of the Federation for Gender, International Gender and Human Rights. And I say this because I'm aware that our Queen Mothers, Ambassador Lomax, um, they're all here and they've always been with us from the very beginning of this journey. And I remember them gracing our commencement and graduation ceremonies. And I'm thankful for your inspiration because your lives are an inspiration to us. And we hope that we're able to live up to that uh, boundary or that level and supersede it. Because I know that it is the prayer of good women that their children do beyond them. 
Thank you. So I wanted to move forward by saying that I'm humbled that this most gracious responsibility and my dreams have merged to help me fulfill the global mandate of the Federation for International Gender and Human Rights, FIRE, in implementing its services in Nigeria. I will be harnessing the international prowess and the global allyship in collaboration with my distinguished colleagues in Nigeria and the rest of the world. Our commitment is to alleviate maternal crisis while establishing sustainable and tangible maternal amenities, as well as ensuring that the rights of women are returned to them and reinstated by them. We hope that this will help to ensure hope, life, trust, and posterity. I hope that I shall be able to graciously serve with all of my experiences, my learning, my training in interprofessional settings, forming lia liaisons between organizations and governments. And I hope that this has equipped me for this most humbling opportunity to serve. It is my greatest honor and my greatest and with great, greatest gratitude that I accept this humble appointment. And I hope that Allah SWT will help me to supersede the expectations and the lives of those before me. Thank you for letting us stand on your shoulders. Thank you, Your Excellency. I really appreciate that. And uh, I congratulate you in this moment. Um, uh, Dr. Um, uh, who was that? I just saw on the chat, um, Aisha Bello, Ambassador Aisha Bello said, um, you will be our next president. And I would love, love, love to see that. I will be sitting in the front row for that to happen, especially in Nigeria. So I am amazed. I thank you. I welcome you. And I thank you for this year appointment. Um, you will continue to be an ambassador even after that. Um, but this will be our mainstay for this year. And in the coming years, your work will be truly, truly appreciated. So thank you so very much. Our next leader will be Dr. Ghazalia Khan. She is the ambassador to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And she has been appointed um, to lead this mission in Pakistan and the one that I will be coming to, to for report. She will also be the creative mind behind the projects, programs, and events that happen. And under her leadership, she will be for this next year working with her fellow colleagues to bring this forward and to make this more powerful than we could possibly imagine. So Dr. Khan, if you can unmute your mic um, and say a few words, if you can, uh, I don't even know if she's still here. I think her connection was lost. But Dr. Khan, um, if you can say a few words to us um, in your acceptance. Oh no, her connection is gone. Yeah, I just got a message, okay. All right, well, we welcome her and we welcome you to this, um, this plateau of understanding since it has been, this program is being recorded, we will send it to her. And of course, her recognition has already been received. So thank you, Dr. Khan. Next is Augusta Asentua Boateng, who will be the ambassador to the Republic of Ghana. She will be working with um, Madam Ambassador Ama, who will be also doing the, the great work of making sure that the Republic of Ghana will have its sure footing in the work for gender and human rights equity, uh, equality, and the posterity of knowing that this gap will close. So I wanna thank you. Um, I don't see her here. I think her connection has lost, but if she comes back, I will allow her to speak as well. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Me. Ambassador Anthony Anakia Matuli will be the new ambassador for the Republic of Kenya. And he will be representing the entire country for the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. Not just because he is the only one here as an ambassador, but because he is given the understanding of what it is that needs to happen, needs to be done, and is in true ownership of the work that we do here at the Federation. So while I go and soothe my granddaughter who's singing her song, I'm gonna ask that you come and bring a few words of, of acceptance of your ambassadorship. Thank you so very much.
We can't hear you, Ambassador. I'm saying I'm um, sorry, I had not unmuted. I'm overwhelmed with emotion. This is indeed a great, should I call it Easter surprise? I didn't expect this. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Amina. It's a great honor to have been chosen a team lead in this global ambassadorship in Kenya and the East African region. I will pursue gender parity as I've always done in the past. I didn't mention the name of my organization. It is Moms and Child Support Initiative. I already have a website. It will be coming live in like in the next one week. And I shall, with this new title in consultation with Dr. Amina and all the other ambassadors from the post, this is an international organization. Although I am registering a national organization, but I would rather have it collaborated, have an international outlook. Because with my organization in Kenya, the footprint of figure is already realized in Kenya. It is that easy. And so with figure as the umbrella organization, I seek to achieve all it is that figure stands for are there to the code of ethics that is in place for the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights and ensure that the opinion of a woman are not just in singularity, but for women at large is brought on top of the table. That every decision that is being made is touching the same ladies it's touching the children that they give birth to. They must be part of the decision-making process. And therefore, I will always fight for the right and empowerment of women. Whatever it takes, I shall step my foot in that fire. Thank you very much for the appointment, Dr. Amina. Thank you, Your Excellency. I really, really appreciate that. And I really appreciate the fact that you are championing this, you and your beautiful wife and children whose son just went to college. So I know what that feels like to have a child in college and just, you just, uh, yes. it's accomplishment. So thank you for stepping yeah. in this place, allowing your son to see what real men do and allowing your wife to understand that the support is real, it's there and it's understood for all of us. So thank you so very much. Um, our next appointee is Dr. Karen D. Lomax. She has now made it. UN Women Gambia has welcomed her. Um, now her official appointment is here in the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. She is advisory council lead uh, for the United States. She will also be advisory council lead for the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. Um, she is reigning here in the United States, but she is for the diaspora. And she is our US ambassador. So she is the one that is going to challenge the rights here in the United States for what it is that we are going to be doing, how we're going to move it. And um, when I can get her to, here to New York, we're going to set up a meeting here for her to be introduced to the UN uh, directly um, and be able to be welcomed accordingly. So thank you, Dr. Karen Lomax. I thank you so much. Advisory Council Lee, please take the floor and uh, speak a few words on your new appointment. Well, before I start speaking of myself, um, as is custom, we have an elder in the room. So may I speak, Queen Mother? <laughs> By all means. By all thank means. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I am so humble. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Thank you to all of my, my friends and family who are who are actually watching uh, today. A lot of them didn't get a chance to see all the stuff that we've been doing, but today uh, they actually got a chance to see the end <laughs> of what we have been doing. And I'm so grateful uh, to God first and foremost. Uh, I'm grateful to Queen Mother because without women of her stature, we would not be able to do things that we have done. Um, and also giving honor to, to Queen Amanada. I always wanna include her as well because I will be working with her as well. So I wanna reach out to her and say, thank you, thank you. And always to Her Excellency, Dr. Amina Ali, again, 
for the platform and for being obedient to the voice of the Almighty uh, to even do this, to even extend um, this arm of the UN for those of us who would otherwise not get a chance to even get a toe, must let a foot in the door. And so I'm so grateful and I'm so honored to do that. And this is not a position that I accept lightly. I thought long and I thought hard. Um, and I say that to any of our ambassadors who have accepted these appointments, think about it. And if you don't think that you can, can lead the way that you're supposed to lead, if you don't think that you can operate um, the way you're supposed to operate, if you cannot adhere to the terms that come along with your ambassadorship, it is not too late to say, can I give it just one more season um, before I accept this role? Because a lot of responsibility, a lot of accountability goes into it. And as we said before, your integrity is on the line. People are watching you. People are listening to you, not just in your region, but globally. And so you have a global responsibility and that's heavy. Uh, and I feel that. Um, and so that's why I, I walk the way I walk and I talk the way I talk. And, I, and everybody that follows me, they know I'm a jokester. I love to joke. But when it comes to things of this nature, and because I know that God is in this, I take this very, very seriously. And so I just humbly and gracefully and graciously accept the appointment. And I thank you. Oh, sorry, I was, I was muted. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador. And I welcome you um, to this appointment. Um, you and I are gonna be working, because uh, I have to begin to delegate. And a lot of it is learning how to do that. So I'm going to make sure that I am, I'm doing this well. Uh, Queen Mother has already whispered in my ear, um, um, knowing that there is a, uh, a greatness for what it is that we are doing and how we're doing it and what we're doing. Um, we are wondering what it is that has happened um, in society and we're gonna just bring solutions. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lomax. Thank you. I, I can't even begin to even say thank you for accepting it because I, I need it. I need it, if nothing else, I need your hand to hold. So thank you so very much. All right, the next one, <laughs> I don't even have to say, you know what, I'm just, I'm, I, you, come on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If y'all not clapping with me, something is wrong with my computer screen. I'm telling you, yes, yes, yes. Dr. Catherine Hall Trujillo, elder counsel, of the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. If y'all not clapping, y'all look, 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 say, say amen or say ouch. What, what do y'all say? Say amen or say ouch? <laughs> we gonna say amen right now. Queen mother. I, I, yeah, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Yes, I am asking for your complete hand, permission, authority, and, and hand to hold in this mission, but I cannot do it unless I have this wisdom. So I am gonna ask that you speak on what it is that this role means to you as an elder. I know what it means to me and I can't even, I just gotta get a tissue right now because I'm about to lose it again. But I need you to tell me what it means to you as an elder to step in this position, to be able to help in this capacity. And I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna shut up. I'm just gonna go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, of course, I'm speechless. Absolutely speechless. Because, as I said in the chat to Queen Amanita, being a child of the diaspora. that sense of, of not being home is so painful. And every time one of the children of the continent says, welcome home, it heals a bit of that pain of being like spun out from what you know is your center. And so to be a part of something 
where I get to claim the children. And I think every elder understands two things. If you are queen mother, that means that you are mother of the queen. You are mother of the king. You are mo mother of the children. It's not about you. It's your, I'll speak for myself, my opportunity mm -hmm. to just love on and support and be there for those who are now stepping into their fullness. And as that Sweet Honey in the Rock song says, hey girl, and I'd have to say now, hey son, hey daughter, you look a lot like me, but you're stronger and more powerful and smarter than I'll ever be. So just being able to live long enough to not only carry the seed for the children that I birthed out of my own, as we say, personal body, but to be able to carry all the children from that place of being unapologetically a woman of African descent. This is like, what could be better? What could be better than being a part of a family where my role is basically to be there and support those who are taking us the rest of the way? Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being the elder daughter, Dr. Amina. You know, there's a special relationship between mama and that elder daughter. Yes, ma'am. Um, and, I, and I receive you. I receive every ounce of you and that permission to be in that space right now, in this right now moment. So thank you so very much for that. And thank you for accepting this. Um, I, it really means a lot to me. That means I have someone to go to when I'm ready to pull the rest of my hair out, what, what radiation didn't take out from this cancer, I'm telling you, I'm ready to pull the rest of it out. But I am truly thankful and I'm truly, truly appreciative of what it is that you have done for me and, and with me uh, this far. So thank you so very much. And it came with sisters. Yeah. Yes, you know. the next one is coming in. I'm hoping she can get in because we lost her. And I don't know how, how we do, wow. I don't know how we can get her back, but the next one is our ambassador to the African Union, Her Royal Highness, Queen Aminata Koita is um, our new ambassador to the African Union and she has accepted this graciously. And I wanted to at least recognize her now. Um, she will be our connection to the African Union and be able to bring us forward in that descent. So I am very, very appreciative of her and of this appointment. So I'm gonna to try to get her in while we go. Um, let me see, let me see. Okay, so as we sit here, um, yes, we are going to have a Federation pledge and acceptance of oath, which is what happens at any diplomatic inauguration. This is where you not only say that you're going to accept it out loud, but you say it in front of the governing body that has appointed you. And you also say it with good credence that others will hear it. And this is the intention behind what it is that you are doing. This is also for you to not only say it because it sounds good and it feels good, but you say it because your voice is now making you accountable. So as Dr. Lomax says, if at any time, and we put this in this clause right now, and I'm glad that she prefaced me, we put this now that at any time in this, that you feel that you cannot uphold your duties, uphold the rights, respects, privilege, and responsibility of this position for the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights, for humanity and the dignity of human and gender rights. We ask that you step down in this position, holding true respect and autonomy to knowing that your work still will continue. So I ask at this moment, just like they say in a wedding, if anyone feels that, <laughs> that <laughs> these two should not be married. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold their peace. I, I am going to ask you to uh, speak now if this is something that you cannot hold to be true and self-evident, that you speak now or remove yourself from this oath as of right now. 
And if you do so, there will be love in my heart for you because I will still support your work. And there will be true candor of kindness in what you are doing moving forward, for I will still support you. Um, as we move forward, I'm going to allow you to... Hold on two seconds. I'm going to give you a minute to read this as we go forward. Hold on. I'm going to ask that each of you within the power of your might to rise with me um, and rise in power with me. And I want you to uh, unmute your mics, those ambassadors. Um, just unmute your mics. Um, please make sure that the background noise is kept down to a minimum because we need to hear your voice. And we need those that are in the governing body to hear you say this. Um, and you're going to repeat after me, again, filling in where you need to fill in. And I'm going to ask each and every one of you as you unmute your mics and you repeat what it is that need, is needed to be said, that you also open the understanding of what it is that we need to know um, to be true and right in this position. Um, please make sure that the background noise is to a minimum or go to a room that is quiet so you're able to see, you're able to hear yourself and we are able to hear you clearly. Okay. Please raise your right hand. I, and state your full name. I do promise to uphold the honor. Do do promise to uphold the honor. honor. Dignity and responsibility. Dignity, Dignity and responsibility. Of being a Federation ambassador. Of being, oh, being the Federation ambassador. I do this with the knowledge. I do, I do this, this with, this with the, the knowledge. knowledge that this position is given to me. This, this, this position, position is given to me. With valor, trust, and dignity. We trust dignity of this diplomatic position. Of this, this diplomatic, diplomatic position. I will use my skills to fulfill this position. I will use, use my skills to fulfill this position. And make a difference in the land I represent. And make, and make a difference in the life, in the land I represent. And in the international community that I will enter and serve. And, and in the international, international community, community that I will enter and serve. I, will enter and serve. I accept this with my whole mind. I accept I, this I, with my, my whole mind. mind. And the integrity that this position holds. And, and the integrity that, that this is not on board. 
I announce and declare that you are official ambassador of the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. Congratulations to you all. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to um, the words. We, we already did the words from our ambassadors, but I just want to thank you all right now. Um, our our joy is going to be in what it is that we go forward and work in, but our work is going to be diligent in what it is that our mission is, and that is to solve and salute the work of gender and human rights. And I want to thank you today. I want to thank you. I want to applaud you, and I want to open this uh, ability to be able to know that whatever it is that we are called to do, that we are now going to do it together. I'm going to enter you into a WhatsApp group, and I'm going to allow each of you to be able to get into, into each other. If you have not accepted the invitation, please do. If you're already in the chat, I want you to talk to each other. I want you to conform with each other. Those in the United States can help out Nigeria. Those in Nigeria can help out Kenya and vice versa. And I really want you to have a constant collaboration together. That is a private site that no one is, is going to be allowed to be in um, other than those ambassadors. So what you say there will be privileged and will be um, um, private. So I really want you to get down and dirty and get this work done, OK? Um, I also want to be able to um, let you know that if there's anything you need, any letters you need of official capacity that you need for me to write, please send me an email with the address to the, the governing body that I need to address it to. I will address it on letterhead and send a copy of your, your uh, certificate uh, stating that you are an ambassador. I will also be sending this list to Queen Mother so that she will know who is an ambassador for the um, maternal care policy. So they will also know in the policy that we're bringing forward, who is going to be representing this policy in the work that we do, and then what it is that we are going to be going forth with uh, on our day today. So if it's without further ado, I am going to ask um, for each of you to please see your emails. Um, please just send a note, even if it's on WhatsApp or through, reply to the email. Let me know you received it, um, because I need to know that everyone has has it. If you, any misspellings of the name. Um, Ian Chor, um, if you can let me know if you received your other certificate um, that I sent to you, um, I need to make sure that that spelling was right. And I apologize for that. Um, but let me know that you received it so that I know it's official and that you have it and you have it on today. Um, Queen Mother, it is time for you to close us out with the goodness that you always do. Um, and when you do, of course, um, uh, Dr. Lomax, you will end us in prayer as always. Thank you so very much. I wish um, Queen Aminata could get in, but I guess her, her connection was bad as well where she is. Dr. Amina, you have midwifed us and your fellows who were <laughs> all pregnant with vision and ambition through their fellowship which was their way of growing this, this appointment that they had to meet the future in their bodies, in their minds and in their hearts. And I would say today, it was a beautiful delivery. Look at what we have birthed. Look at what we have birthed. And I think I speak on behalf of all of us because everyone got a certificate and everyone got a commendation but you. But what I will say, I think on behalf of all of us, that what we will give to you to show our gratitude for what you have given to all of us is we will be responsible and raise this child in a way that will bring you great joy beyond great pride and knowing that this moment, looking at this baby, this is the legacy that one day when the elders are not here and you're the elder, you will be able to say, I remember the day this was born. I remember the day this was born. And for that, I think we all say thank you and 
just God be with this beautiful family that you have created and nurtured and continue to support until we meet again. And so it is, say la. I thank you, Queen Mother. I thank you. I thank you. That is my greatest reward. Um, knowing that um, my children will see a legacy that's greater than any money or land or, or precedence that we give, that, that my name will be synonymous with someone being helped. I think, um, you know, I mentioned what I want on my tombstone, but um, I want my dash to mean something. I want my dash, dash to mean something in this world. And if it can help a woman be better, if it can help a man serve better, if it can help a community to grow together, then my dash was well worth it. Um, and no matter what that end date is, I will hopefully be able to have a footstep that my children and my grandchildren who have been good for the most part <laughs> have, have been able to be left. And uh, they will know that they're, they're Iyaya, which means mother of my mother in Swahili. Um, their Iyaya is um, someone that they can be proud of. That I'm, it I'm is already done. Ah. When we see things, it just didn't appear at that moment. It was in the process of becoming until it appeared. Thank you. Relative. It's already here. It's already Thank done. You. That means a lot to me because I know not what to do with these children. I tell you, and I got 17 grand and I... <laughs> That's a lot uh, to be responsible for. And I just pray that there's something that I can do to, to make that statement true, that it's already done. And if this is a piece of it, then I continue in this walk. And I thank you so very much for that. Ashe, Ashe, and so it is. Okay, um, Dr. Lomax, if you will. Yes, ma'am. Before I, I do what I do, um, I, again, I want to thank all of the, the dignitaries who are here with us and those who um, will be watching the, the replay later um, who couldn't stay on with us. And of course, Queen Mother, who always soothes my soul uh, okay. when I get on, because people don't know, I still get nervous uh, to yes. speak. I, yes. I see her and she just kind of calms me down. But I, I want to say thank you to, again, to my friends and family who are up early, because uh, over here it's, it's early in California, um, and, and took the time out to, to actually be here for this life-changing event. Um, my parents who are back in, in Missouri, thank them for, for coming on. And also uh, my overseer, Pastor Larry Sauce Jr. is on as well. Uh, I woke him up. <laughs> So he can witness this. I would have had him do the benediction. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Amen. Thank I'm you. telling you, he he be ready. Okay. We stay ready in and out of season. Yes. Um, and so I want to thank I want to thank him as well because he's a very, very he's active in the community as well. Um and, and to to everyone and to all of the ambassadors, you guys, I'm telling you, um, walk forward in dignity, walk forward in humbleness, though. Be humble, keep the humility. Uh, on high at all times because it's so easy to step outside and allow your ego um, and to, to get the best of you and have your chest puffed out but don't remember what it took for us to get here okay remember that it, it, it was not just your blood sweat and tears um, we are we are riding on the blood sweat and tears of those who came before us and with that father we just thank you yet again for us coming together and for such an auspicious occasion. God, I ask you to look over everyone who is in attendance. Father, I ask you right now to, to shower your blessings on all of the ambassadors. Open up the doorways, open up the highways, byways, open up the doors, Father God, for them to walk in and do the things now that they have been commissioned to do. God, I ask you to continue to keep us humble, but keep us confident that this is the plan and the purpose that you've had on our lives ever since the beginning of time. And Father, I ask you again, Father, to touch Dr. Amina, touch her hand, touch her heart, touch her mind, continue to let her be the beacon of light and the conduit to which you are doing a great work in the earth. And Father, when we look back on this day, not only will we joy, uh, be praiseful and shout, not only will we be glad for what has happened, but we'll be forever careful to give you and only you all praise, honor, 
and glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Uh, so, okay, so we eat I'll now. Put my cash app in the in the thing. <laughs> I want Chipotle yeah. today. I'm putting my cash app in the chat. <laughs> we, we, we can eat now. We can we can eat now. So I, I'm I'm just hoping because I'm so nervous that my stomach is probably talking in a couple of languages right now. I'm just so nervous. I couldn't eat anything. I got this coffee down. I got a little energy. Now it's time to eat because I am. We are done. We are finished. Thank you so much to everyone. Please look for the link. Um, ambassadors, I'm going to send one link to the ambassador uh, group. Um, and all of you should be in there now. Um, if not, please accept the invitation. It should be in your email or your WhatsApp. Um, and it's to come into the group. Um, and once you do, you'll be able to get the video. You'll be able to get the uh, onboarding packet that you're going to receive, which is the job description, the NDA, the non-compete, the statement of ethics, the letter of acceptance that you have to get notarized and send back. Um, and you'll probably have to postal mail that because we need, unless the notary is ink, if you have a raised seal, then we'll have, you'll have to send it back by postal. But if the notary has an ink stamp, you can just scan it back in. And um, that should be coming to you also in the group. So everyone will be able to get one document and be able to uh, print it off and do everything you need to do and have it sent back. Once that is done, um, you will get your full tenure of uh, notification of duties and you will be doing the work. And I am telling you, I cannot say anything, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From, on behalf of the United Nations, the African Union, Queen um, Aminata is not here from ECOWAS, from the birthing project that I'm so proud to be able to join into this and from the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights, congratulations to each and every one of you. Um, UN Women Gambia, um, Global Goodwill Ambassadors of the Gambia, um, the Human Rights Federation and Foundation, um, and UNICEF, of course, because we work with the children. So just know we are loving you, we are working with you, and now you are working a part of us in the global context of this, and we salute you. And I thank you so very much for this time and this, this pleasure is all mine. So have a great rest of your day. I wanna see some posts on LinkedIn cause I wanna be able to just shout it out myself and I wanna be able to shout on you. So please, please, please look at, look at uh, Anthony's baby. That's Madam, Madam Matuli. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. She is so loved. She is so loved. Well, I'm not gonna let you see them because they're tearing up my bed as we speak. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> but I love you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I will see you soon. Um, look in the chat and please make sure that you have um, all that you need for what it is that we're going to be doing in the very, very near future. So thank you again. I will talk to you soon. Be well. Congratulations.